Hello everyone, myself Shivangi Desai. I am your instructor for the video series of Python for Data Science. Today's our topic is managing data of data frame. So let's get started. So in today's lecture, we are going to discuss how we can add a new column into the data frame, how we can remove the existing data from the data frame and how to apply sorting on the data of the data frame. So let's understand this in the practical session. In order to add a new column to data frame, we have two alternative ways. The first one is to declare a list as column and a second way is to use a data frames insert method. So let's understand the first method that is declaring a list as column. So here first I am importing pandas as pd and I am loading the data in my data frame df using pd.readcsv in which I am loading the data of csv underscore one dot csv file. So let's check the content of our file. So in this file we have four different columns that is name, age, state and point and all this column contains 12 different records. We have loaded this data inside our data frame df. Now I want to add a new column named gender. So here first I have declared a list that is G in which I have stored the values of the gender that is either male or female. Now I am assigning this list G to our data frames new column that is gender. Now whatever the name you want to give to this new column you have to assign this inside this square bracket along with our data frame object df and using equal to sign we will assign the value to this new column. Here G contains a list of different values for the column gender. Now I have loaded this data inside the data frame and now let's print the content of our data frame df. So let's run this code. So as you can see here a new column gender is added inside our data frame with the assigned values. The values that I have declared inside this list. The second method is using insert function. So you can notice here that in this method a new column is added at the end of the data frame that is after all the column the new column is appended but what if we want to insert a new column at particular position in this case insert method can be used so the parameter of insert method is location column name values and allow duplicates. So first parameter is location in which we are supposed to pass the location at which we want to add a new column. So here I am passing location is equal to 1 because I want to add a new column at index value 1. In the next parameter that is column we are supposed to pass the name of the new column. So I want to assign new underscore column to the newly added column. And in value, I am passing a list of values for that column. So let's run this code. Now you can check at index value 1, we have this new column associated with the data that we have applied in this value field. Right. So as we all know that index starts with 0. At the 0 location, we have the original column that is name. And at the one location, we have this new column because we have applied this inside this df.insert method. Now, if I run the same code again, it will generate an error. Why? Because this new column is already exist inside our data frame. So, it will give the error that we cannot insert new column because it already exists. Now, what if we want to add the same column again? In this case, we have to use this parameter allow duplicates. By default, the value of allow duplicates is false. So when I turn the value of this allow duplicates parameter as true, I will be able to add the same column again. So let's run this code. Now you can check at location 1, we have this new column and at location 2, we have the new column that we have previously added. Right, because I am using the same df.insert method that we have executed previously. Okay, so using this allow duplicate, you can add any number of duplicate columns. So if I run this again, the new column is added for third time. 
Now next topic is how we can remove the data from the data frame. So to remove the data from the data frame, we can use this drop function. The drop function is used to drop the specified labels from the rows or columns. It will remove the rows or column by specifying the labels or corresponding axis or by specifying directly index or column names. So the syntax of this method is data frame dot drop inside which we can set the value for the parameter labels, axis, columns, in place and errors. So let's explore this method. Here I am taking a new set of data which is a dictionary in which I have assigned five different columns and a list of value to all these columns. So I have labeled A, B, C, D and E to all these columns. Now I am converting this dictionary into a data frame using pd.dataframe method. So in this df is our data frame contained. Let's check this. So here is our data frame with 5 columns and 5 records. Now I want to drop column C and D. So for that we have method df.drop and in which in columns parameter we have to pass a list of column name which we want to drop. So here you need to notice this I am passing the name or we can say labels of the column that is C and D. Now when I run this code it will show me the original data frame. Why? Because I am printing the content of our data frame. This drop method do not reflect these changes inside the data frame. So when I command this line and run the code which print the value of df.drop method, we can see the result contains only A, B and E and C and D column is dropped. But when I print the value of data frame, it will return all 5 columns. Why? Because these columns are not dropped from the data frame. The copy of the data frame is returned by this df.drop method. Now what if we want to reflect the changes inside the data frame? In that case, we have to use this in place parameter. We have to set the value of in place is equal to true. The default value of in place is false. So, if I run the same code again and now I want to print the value of data frame, you can check. Now, the data frame contains only A, B and E column. C and D columns are permanently deleted from the data frame DF. Because we have set the value of in place is equal to true. Now, when I run the same code again, when I run the same code again in which I am dropping the column C and D, which we already have dropped and changes are reflected inside our data frame. So, when I run the same code again, it will generate an error. The error which shows that C and D does not exist inside our data frame because we have already dropped it. What if I don't want to show this error? We do not want to show an error when we are deleting a column which does not exist inside data frame. We have to use this parameter errors. The errors parameter can have two possible values that is raise and ignore. The default value of errors parameter is raise. So when errors is equal to raise, it will generate an error when a drop method does not find a column that we have specified inside this column parameter. But if we set this errors is equal to ignore, then it will ignore the error and return the resulting data frame to us. So here I again running this code in which I have used df.drop and I am trying to drop the column C and D which does not exist in data frame df. So let's run this code. Now you can see that it doesn't generate any error but it showed the remaining content of our data frame, right? Because we have said this error is equal to ignore. When you want to delete your column by the index value rather than passing the name or labels, right? Then we have to use this df.columns. Now as far we have deleted some of the columns from our data frame and I have said the in place is equal to true so all those changes are made permanent inside the data frame and that's why in this code I am reassigning the value of our data frame that, that is 5 columns and 5 records 
and I am using this pd.data frames to convert this dictionary into a data frame object that is df. So again I am using this df.drop method in which I am using df.columns in order to pass the index value to drop, right? I am passing the index value of column to drop those columns. Also I am setting in place is equal to true and access is equal to 1. So access is equal to 1 which means I want to drop this column and not rows. For rows we have to pass 0. So let's run this code. Now you can see out of all 5 columns we have only B and D which has the index value 1 and 3 because I have deleted index 0, 4 and 2 which is column A, C and E. That's why in data frame we have only B and D columns. Now if you want to pass the range of the columns rather than specifying the particular columns I want to pass the range of columns. So again in this code I am importing pandas as pd and assigning value to our data frame. Because I have set the in place is equal to true so previous code has made permanent changes to our data frame. And that's why I am reassigning the value to our data frame using this pd.dataframe method. So in this df we have 5 columns that is a, b, c, d and e and 5 different records. Now inside the df.drop method I am using df.iloc method. Now you need to recall the concept of df.iloc method in which we are passing two arguments that is rows and columns. Here I want to delete a range of columns. That's why I am keeping the first argument as empty using columns. And in the second argument I am passing my range of columns that I want to drop. Now according to the concept of iloc, the second argument is the end location where we want to stop. So here I am passing 1 to 4. That's why it will consider the column 1, 2 and 3. 4 is your endpoint and it won't be added in the result. So when I am passing 1 to 4 inside the drop method using df.iloc, it will drop the column 1, 2 and 3. Also I am setting in place is equal to true and access is equal to 1. That's why the changes will be made permanent inside the data frame and I am considering columns. That's why I am setting access is equal to 1. So let's check the content of the data frame. So as you can see it returns column A and E only because the column 1, 2 and 3 that is B, C and D is dropped using this df.iloc method inside df.drop method. Now next topic is sorting the data. Now to sort your data frames data we have two alternatives. First one is by label and second is by actual values. So let's explore both of them. First is sorting by labels. So first I am importing pandas as pd and using pd.readcsv method I am loading the content of csv underscore one dot csv file inside the df. So df is our data frame which contains the data of csv1 file. So let's check the data. It contains four different columns that is name, age, state and point and 12 records labeled as 0 to 11. Now to sort the data according to the rows I am using this df.sortindex method. The df.sortindex method by default sort the data in ascending order according to the labels of the rows which means the index of the rows. I am storing the result of this method inside the sort underscore df and printing the same. So let's run this code. So it's, it returns the same output as the previous one because already our rows are sorted in ascending order. So if you want to sort the data in descending order, we need to set this ascending is equal to false because by default the value of ascending parameter is true. Now if you want to sort your data in descending order, you have to set this ascending is equal to false. So again, I am using this df.sortindex method in which I am setting ascending is equal to false and storing the result inside sort underscore df and printing the same. So let's see the results. Now our data is printed in descending order that is index started from 11 
and goes down to the zero that is in descending order now this data is sorted according to the rows but what if we want to sort our data according to the columns for that we have to set the parameter axis the axis parameter has two possible values that is zero and one by default the value of this parameter is zero which is rows and for columns we have to set the value one so here i am using df.sort index method in which i am setting axis is equal to one and storing the result inside sort underscore df parameter so i am printing the same variable so let's run this code now you can see all my rows are in the order 0 to 11 but all my columns are arranged inside the alphabetical order that is starting from A and goes towards to S. Right. But now I want to sort this columns in descending order. So now I have to set two parameters. The first one is ascending is equal to false and second axis is equal to 1. To sort our data in descending order, we have to set ascending is equal to false. And to apply the sorting on columns, we have to set axis is equal to 1. So again, I am using this sort.index method and sorting the result inside sort underscore df variable. And I am printing the same variable. So now our columns are sorted in descending order. So in this case, we first have the state column, then point, then name and then age. So, these columns are sorted in descending order according to the alphabets. So, by now, we were sorting our data according to the labels of rows or columns. But now, I want to sort my data according to the actual values. So, for that, we have this sort underscore value method. So, again, I am importing pandas as pd and using pd.readcsv, I am loading the content of csv underscore one file inside data frame df. Now I'm calling the data frames method df underscore df dot short values. Inside this method, inside this method, I have to set this parameter by with the column name. I'm passing the list of column according to which I want to short my data. So I want to short my data according to the column name. So I'm passing the value of the label of that column. And I'm showing the result inside this SRT underscore df variable and printing the same. So you can check this result in which data is sorted according to the column name, in which all this data are sorted according to the values of column name in alphabetical manner. Now if I want to short this data in descending order, then I have to set ascending is equal to false inside my sort underscore values method. So again, I am loading the data in df. The data comes from the csv underscore one file. And I am using this sort underscore values method along with this df in which I am passing column name and setting ascending is equal to false. So all the data will be sorted according, according to the values of name column in descending order. So as you can see, all this data is sorted in descending order according to the name column. So these are the way to add, remove or short the data of your data frame. Using this set of methods, we can perform this kind of operation on the data frame. So that's it about this lecture. Thank you.